Hey there, everybody. What's going on? Thanks for stopping by for another show of the Game Buffet. Uh, it's getting weird to say that. I'm starting to get used to it, though, but I am still your host, Too Much Food. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the Xbox, and I think it's appropriate because its 15th birthday just came up not that long ago, and I held the little polls, the little survey thingy that I do on Twitter, where you guys get to choose what you want me to review, and it was all the consoles from the sixth generation the ps2 the gamecube the og xbox the dreamcast and the og xbox won out and thankfully it did look here's the thing i love the sega dreamcast right but if i had to do a third sega console in a row i was already gonna hate my show me and i'm the host so i'm i'm very happy that xbox one we'll get back to the dreamcast in the future uh its birthday just came up so this feels right uh, and it's arguably one of my favorite consoles, period. So let's get started. The OG Xbox. It came out in North America on November 15, 2001. And uh, it came out as something that was supposed to disrupt the market. Uh, essentially try to take market share from what Sony was poised to get because it looked like Sony was going to be taking this all from Nintendo with ease. Uh, with no one really challenging them, especially with the Dreamcast dying out. So uh, over there internally at Microsoft, they seen that the PlayStation 2, what they were trying to do, they were trying to market themselves to the PC gamer. So that would be taking market share from them. After all, they have Windows operating systems and they support uh, uh, computer gaming. And uh, so the thing that happened was, is they started to do some mock-ups of uh, Seamus Blackley who is the father of Xbox. Uh, I follow him on Twitter and we, he and I shoot tweets every now and then. So if you check this out, Seamus, thanks for stopping by. This is for you and this is for me from you. So I really appreciate it. Seamus Blackley uh, really, really went out of the box with this one. No, no pun intended, I guess. Uh, this to me was something that wasn't really supposed to exist. I mean, Windows was for PC and Bill Gates was all about the PC. He wanted windows in the living room. And Seamus, when he came up with this, it was to compete, to kind of grab what Sony and Nintendo, with some respects, was taking from them. It was just taking back what's ours type of thing. And uh, he wanted to create something that was different. Uh, and by all means, man, he did. This console right here, Although it's not the first console to have uh, online gaming, uh, it was one of the first, if not the first, that did it right. Uh, this console, when it launched, it launched with hype. Uh, they launched a massive campaign, and they launched it in New York City. In New York City because it's on the Eastern time zone, in New York City because it's the first time zone in America that gets hit, New York City because it's the biggest city in America, and I mean, they had all the, what is it, the real estate for ads. If you went there in Times Square, every single one of those ads were Xbox, 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 Xbox. And who was there? Bill Gates. Bill Gates handed out the first Xbox himself. He cashed them out himself, and he signed the console himself. And I mean, and I would hope he did that himself, unless he would have, like, a secretary sign his signature, which would be forgery and be super lame. But it, he also helped Seamus Blackley through his proposal. He held the ring for Seamus. Thankfully, the girl said yes, because that would have been super embarrassing if, if she didn't. Um, but the Xbox event was massive. They have superstars there, celebrities. At the time, here in America, wrestling was big. Wrestling's picking up again in pace, but they had uh, uh, The Rock hang out, go to these events. Uh, if you remember him, he was at, I believe it was uh, CG he was at, not E3, but I could be incorrect. And uh, the console itself had an uphill battle, not just because the consoles that they had to compete with, but the time that it launched. It was the first major event in New York City since 9-11. And that's difficult all around to me at the very least, because how do you bring back like hype for an American product? And how do you bring that hype in a city that was just attacked by terrorists and thousands of people lost their lives. So they they had an uphill battle, not just from competition, but just from that aspect, from the aspect of morale. Uh, so to me, this launch was a success. 
but we all know that the launch isn't really what measures success. It's about the coming year and not necessarily that first holiday because they launched in the holiday, but the second holiday matters the most. So they packed this console with everything that they believe that they needed it to do. You got on the back here an Ethernet port, which was the first console with that built in standard. That's the standard, not dial up, not no 56K modem, nothing like that. Uh, it has support for HD TV, 720p, 720i, 1080i, and uh, I believe in rarities, uh, 1080p, but uh, almost non-existent. And uh, this console has a hard drive in it. So no shuffling memory cards. You don't have to buy those expensive memory cards that you got on your PS2 or your GameCube. They had the option if you wanted to, for example, you still go to your friend's house, you have the option, but it's not forced down your throat and out of your wallet. This console too also used USB, modified USB 1.0 ports, four of them up front. Uh, it also supported DVD. I'd buy this like little dongle thingy, which I wasn't a fan of. It should have just worked out of the box. I believe that was just something to uh, pick up headroom, uh, just get a little bit of cash. Uh, it also launched with two remotes. There's the S type remote that you see here. And then there's the Duke remote. I don't have it here, but I'll have an image going up somewhere up here when I do this. So um, the Duke remote was the, uh, it was their first mistake. I mean, I don't have little hands, but if you remember that Burger King commercial where the guy's like, I don't want to eat at Burger King because I have really small hands and his hands are like this big. That's how I feel with the Duke controller. I cannot hold that and feel comfortable as a gamer and with my masculinity. So that thing was too huge. And uh, they came out with this S-Type controller, but it wasn't in response to that. The funny thing was, is that this was made for the Japanese market because they're traditionally just smaller people overall. Uh, so uh, I guess it's weird because Burger King's really popular over there. And uh, what was happening is that people were ordering the S-Type controllers and shipping them from Japan to America, to Europe, to Canada and so forth so they just said you know screw it let's just make this the standard so that's how we got the s-type controller that's how that happened um the console itself was the most powerful in the generation so whatever game you got if it was a, an exclusive or a multi-plat it was uh the better looking so your exclusives look better than other console exclusives uh and the quality arguably was much better as well and uh the multi-plats they would just have more content like it would say it in the back you get an extra character extra levels extra maps uh be extra bonus features behind the scenes videos and you you're able to do this because of this console being the most powerful uh it was really a console built for the gamer but i want to say strangely it was built for the developer they went around asking developers while they were working with Sega on the Dreamcast. They were going around asking developers what would they like out of this Xbox, and it was it was a big secret. So um, when they when they put this together, it was such a big risk uh, because they were working with Sega. Uh, they never been in the market before. The whole 9/11 thing. Uh, they would be competing with themselves in a way, and if. It could go, if this failed, the whole thing could go wrong. They'd spend billions of dollars. They had to convince uh, Steve Ballmer and Bill Gates that this is something that they want to invest in. And uh, to tell Bill Gates that this didn't run Windows, that was a big problem, you know? Uh, even though it is customized, it's not full-fledged Windows or even Windows in, in comparison. You couldn't really use any of its features like you did with the Xbox One or how you do with it now. And this console here was essentially for the developer. And then it just turned out that the developer was able to create whatever image that they wanted and, and give it to you, what their dream was, what their creation was. And then we got games like this over here. Halo Combat Evolve, which was, this, this was the flagship game. 15 years old as well. The next flagship, you got Halo 2. Uh, this was the best game that generation period to me. Not because it's a shooter, but because of the quality, the script, the writing, 
uh, the actors, the, the audio, the visuals, the mechanics, everything played really good. Another game that I loved, and I just, it's ridiculous that this came out on a console. Like, I can't think, like, I, I wouldn't be able to think that this was possible on console, and obviously it was able to be done on Xbox. You got Morrowind here, Elder Scrolls, which, was, which started the whole thing for me with the whole Elder Scrolls thing. Uh, I spent hundreds of hours in this and then again in Oblivion. Uh, th this, is, uh, this is a game you should pick up if you haven't. Uh, this is one of my favorite fighting games and I'm not a fighting game type of guy. And the fighting games that I do play is Super Smash Brothers like religiously. And that's because I feel like I can beat you and piss you off at the same time. But this right here, although it's not traditionally up my alley, Soul Calibur 2. I liked it, and this generation, when this game came out, it was pretty cool. Uh, the Xbox had the Spawn character as an exclusive, and then the GameCube had a Link, and the PlayStation 2 had their own exclusive character, but I can't quite remember exactly who that is. Uh, then you got one of two games here that I'd highly recommend. This came out as a multi-plat, but I enjoyed both of them, including this one. It's Baldur's Gate 2. It's absolutely amazing it's two player you could play it with your brother or your cousin friend whatever if you don't have any you can tie a remote to your vacuum and say he's your friend then you got the star wars the knights games these are amazing the only bad thing about them that i could really say is that they're one player i would have loved to play these like Baldur's gate uh, but these are just they're a work of art and this is why they get a lot of praise the visuals are good the, the script is really good on here too um, they spent a lot of time making the game, so it's really high, of high quality. And then you got Call of Duty when it was Call of Duty and not a game that people would sigh first and then say their name. So this is actually one of the good Call of Duties. It's the Big Red 1 2, I believe. Call of Duty 2 Big Red 1. Got that backwards. With all the, I'm glad they at least narrowed down the names because you can't be having two names for your game. Or two parts to a second part of a game. That's too confusing. But these are some of the shining examples of Xbox and, and the games that were created. But there, there was a lot more. And they got a lot of Japanese games as well. Surprisingly, surprisingly, a lot more Japanese support than I can think of for the Xbox One, the one we're on now. Uh, mainly because this was like a spiritual successor to the Sega Genesis. I'm sorry, I misspoke. The Sega Dreamcast. Uh, they got a lot of the games that were in the pipeline for the Sega Dreamcast. So when Sega went away of the Woolly Mammoth, the games transitioned over here. They actually transitioned everywhere, let me say that. GameCube got some, PlayStation got some, and Xbox got some. Through marketing, they not marketing, through deals, contracts, they went and met up with everybody and tried to pretty, essentially bid on these games and, and sold them off. But Xbox got the most. Uh, a lot of the Sega fans migrated to Xbox and still to this day, the people that I know that love Sega are the people that love Xbox and the people who love Xbox are the people who love Sega. So I think that deal worked out for them in the long run because these people have actually stuck around and supported the platform. So the Xbox was definitely to me the best box and it provided experiences that these other platforms weren't able to, to provide all the way around from visuals to audio like surround sound uh, different types of rem remotes to cater to your country or what people have given you feedback for games that have gone beyond what games were known for i've never had a game make me feel sad until i've played a game like halo and halo 2. Uh, these games essentially went above and beyond and changed the landscape in my opinion. Halo 1. This game here was special to me because this is how I played Xbox. By I played Xbox by accident and I was one of those you know Sony guys that only played Sony platforms. I didn't really care to play anything else and uh, I went to my cousin's house and he wasn't home so me being intrusive and not caring about him not being there I went into his room and I just fired up his Xbox so I could play something while I wait for him to get there. And I was playing a game and it was amazing. Like I, I was blown away, like the visuals, the gameplay, the music, 
And uh, I went home because he never he never showed up. But I called him later, and I was like, what game was that that I was playing? And it turned out to be Halo Combat Evolved. And I was so excited. And this next part makes no sense. I picked up a copy of Halo Combat Evolved, even though I didn't have an Xbox. I The only thing I can think of is I did that to like motivate myself to get that Xbox so that I can look at this and be like, well, I can't play on my PS2. So what I did was essentially I gathered up my entire collection for PlayStation and PlayStation 2, and I traded those all in and I got myself an Xbox. And since then I've been essentially stuck on there. That's my main platform. As you know, I still play other platforms. Uh, I don't show Nintendo stuff for copyright issues, but of all the consoles and platforms, the Xbox will always be my favorite platform, uh, and the original Xbox will probably be my second favorite console ever made. So thanks again for stopping by. This right here is your game buffet. This is the Xbox. I am too much food. Thanks for stopping by. Please don't forget to rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs> I'm not used to having people here. No, 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 it's fine. This is, I'm probably gonna put this in the bloopers in the very end. People love that. So I forgot to tilt the little screen.